what is WAF web application firewall so before getting into this let's understand about some uh, basic concepts like um, client server architecture and uh, functions of our traditional firewall and what are the limitations of firewall so that once we get uh, know about this it will be helpful for us to understand about WAF right so uh, basically uh, here in WAF right in this course we are uh, um, seeing about application security especially web application security so maybe just consider that uh, www.testify.com is a web application that's running in this particular server right so any web application okay or whatever application it is it should be run uh, it should be operational on any um, server it can be a dedicated server or a vm server whatever it is it needs a server to operate functions right so any web application will be running in the server so this is our web server okay and maybe it has ip address 10.10.10.10 and uh, it, if any client want to access this particular application uh, testify.com he need to connect uh, over the internet or sorry over the network to reach the destination right to the web application so uh, if if the client with ip address 172.16.0.50 he want to access testify.com through network he can access the server and the application running within the server right so uh, maybe uh, just consider it is an uh, intranet so that um, i just used uh, the private ip segments right so if in case uh, it is an internet how it works maybe uh, this client may be having some public ip address and just like the same uh, we'll be having some other public ip address here for this server right it is just an uh, high level understanding right and uh, maybe uh, we'll be having some dns some dns server here so when this client over the internet he want to communicate testify.com so uh, he will be uh, searching that particular url in his web browser so when he is searching that url in his web browser first this dns resolution uh, resolution is com comes into picture right so here first of all uh, he need to understand or he need to know about the destination ip address only then he can reach to this particular destination okay so when he search for uh, www.testify com in his web browser so first this dns request will goes to this dns server asking for who is testify.com so in a dns server already there is a there should be a record a map towards uh, whatever public ip address uh, that is allocated for this server okay so with this dns response client will get to know about the uh, original public ip address of the application server right so we are talking here about uh, the internet communication we are just considering about uh, this client it's he's he is an internet and this is uh, this server is also in internet with two different networks so that's that's the reason we are bringing dns in picture okay even in some cases internet cases also we need dns but uh, it's in uh, this example we are considering as internet okay so once he gets the ip address of the uh, the actual destination the server then with that ip address he will try to reach to the destination to this server okay so once the server re receive the request from this client then the server will respond to the client right so this is how uh, this client server architecture works or uh, the clients will access the application that's running in the server okay so uh, let's see this is very high level as i said earlier but when it comes to any infrastructure we'll be having a firewall in place uh, to provide a network security okay so this is a, uh, a earlier uh, means it, it's a kind of a traditional firewall i say uh, means nowadays we do have uh, next gen firewalls as well right but in most of the cases we have traditional firewalls which protects network which protects network attacks or uh, which provides network security okay so what is the uh, functions of firewall so when it comes to traditional firewall it works on layer 3 and layer 4 right so what is layer 4 so generally there will be set of uh, rules okay um, say for example th this is a kind of an example okay similar example it will be having from this particular source to this particular destination if a traffic comes using to this particular uh, destination port number what action to be performed so there are two kinds of an action that can be performed by the firewall one is 
it can deny or it can permit the request right so if you see this rule simple rule it says that when um, a source ip means if the client 172.16.0.50 uh, it, it it's there in the firewall saying that whenever you get a traffic from this particular source means this particular client towards this particular destination 10.10.10.10 using port 80 the http traffic just deny it okay say for example when um, this guy he want to communicate with uh, this destination is when he is trying to access 10.10.10.10 .10 using port 80 so when this request comes here it will check the rules available okay and uh, as first the first rule says that if the traffic comes with from this particular source to this particular destination using port 80 then deny the traffic to so drop the traffic so what happens then this particular request will be dropped denied at firewall it will not be allowed to pass through the firewall okay and at the same time if um, the same client he sends another request using port 443 maybe if he is coming like this 10 10 10 443 the HTTPS traffic okay so the firewall will, will check the session will check this request and it will go through its role okay if you see that uh, it has the rule to allow the traffic right uh, it says that 172.16.0.50 if it comes from this source to this destination for using this destination port number permit the traffic so what happens it will permit it right so this is how a traditional firewall will work okay basically it is providing a network security okay so unauthorized access can be prevented using based on the ip address source and destination ip address and port number okay so this is the functions of a traditional firewall but all the clients right all the clients uh, who are using the application is not a good guys <laughs> there are some bad guys also so basically there are two kinds of uh, users one is a legitimate user a normal user the other one is malicious user when i say malicious users mm, they want to harm the application server the applications or the destination uh, also referred as hackers right so th mainly these people want to compromise the destination and they want to use it for their own um, purposes right so here let's understand about the limitations of traditional firewall so in the previous uh, uh, um, PPT we have seen uh, how the firewall works right using layer 3 and layer 4 so when it comes to uh, and uh, in this uh, PPT let's understand what is the limitation or drawback of this particular traditional firewall so as we said earlier it works only on layer 3 and layer 4 it, it don't have any control on layer 7 so as it don't have any control on layer 7 it cannot prevent the application or it it can it it can't provide the application security okay so that uh, we are saying that it is designed for network security because it works only on layer 3 and layer 4 okay let's consider the same example say for example uh, and uh, maybe we can go through with 443 itself because we, most of the people thinks that uh, if it is an ssl if it's an 443 communication has to communication it's secured no it's not like that yes it is a secure in in a way but still uh, we can compromise it right so let's see say for example this user okay uh, if you want to uh, access this particular destination testify.com using https maybe as, as we discussed earlier first it goes for this dns reservation and it will get it gets the ip address of the original destination from the dns and once it gets the ip address of this destination it comes like this right 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 10 4 4 3 right so when this request hits here okay when this request hits here firewall will check for this rule if you see here now uh, we have allowed for the entire subnet right so it, it says that uh, whatever a client whatever the source that's coming from this particular network the slash 24 network to this destination using 443 permitted if it's a 80 then DNA. it's not 80 it's 443 so it should be permitted so it will be allowed here right so this is how uh, a normal user will uh, access the destination and once he get the response 
so he will get the response from the server and he will make use of this application in a legitimate way but <coughs> i'm sorry so when it comes to malicious uses the hackers uh, even with 443 means even with ssl uh, ssl okay what they'll do they'll um, as i said earlier it's not that if it is a full https or ssl it's completely secure no, not like that a hacker can uh, you know um, do as uh, ssl injection or uh, uh, he can um, inject any any type of a code in the top layers and he can execute it okay so what happens <coughs> what happens when a request from this malicious users comes uh, basically it will come like 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 10 4 4 3 right so when a request comes like this now firewall will check uh, he'll check for the it will check for the rules that is available in it and uh, as, I, as we said earlier there is an uh, rule that is permitted permitting this traffic if in case it is an 80 obviously it will be dropped there is a rule to permit so now it will permit to pass through firewall here the risk is see as of now it's working as per the design okay it it checked uh, it checked for 443 yes it is 443 and it is allowing but here comes the picture because it crossing layer 3 and layer 4 so actually once this request hits uh, this destination uh, whatever uh, the malicious content that the hacker injected in the headers right in the layer 7 the top layers it will execute here in this application server okay and uh, by this he can compromise the destination or he can uh, you know he can make the server uh, uh, in the way he want to work he can inject malicious contents he he can uh, uh, access unauthorized content which is he which which he is not authorized to access he can um, see see the uh, um, confidentiality information uh, that belongs to that application something so and so okay so uh, there are a lot of things that can happen uh, maybe our apps, our apps top 10 so this cannot be prevented using this legacy firewall because it works only on layer 3 and layer 4 but hackers works this avap stop 10 or uh, http flood those kind of attacks on top layer on layer 7 which cannot be uh, identified uh, by this firewall okay so it pass easily passes this device and once it reaches this destination it will manipulate the information here it will it starts to work in the way uh, this particular user or this malicious user want to do it okay so so this is the main limitation and uh, drawback of using the uh, traditional firewall okay uh, yes it is useful the traditional firewall we have used uh, in lot of lot of places where it provided a network security using ip address and port number however when it comes to application security the legacy firewall uh, cannot protect it cannot uh, protect the applications it's not used in the great extent as like the layers on firewall okay so this this is the limitation of a traditional firewall and this is how uh, hackers can easily uh, pass through the firewall and they can uh, compromise the server because they are they they are working on top layer not on layer 3 and layer 4 okay this is top layer layer 7 so now let's understand what is WAF. Okay, so now earlier we have un understood about uh, limitations, uh, functions, and working uh, limitations of firewall, right? So now let's understand about WAF. So WAF is a device, an appliance that is placed in between a firewall and the destination, uh, means the web application server, or it is it it is um, in front of the server or we can say in the other words also server the web application server is behind the WAF okay now how it happens when the same uh, malicious user he want to uh, you know <coughs> access this destination maybe using the same port as like in the previous example now what happens let's see 10 10 10.10 10 .10, 443 okay 
when the request hits firewall it checks for the rule right and as we as per our earlier example there is a rule to allow traffic for 443 from this particular subnet 172.16.00/24 so there is a rule so it allows the request to pass through it so now once the request comes to waf okay before going into uh, our destination server the web application fi firewall it comes to waf okay so here is the main picture because here the waf will inspect intercept that uh, packet okay it will intercept inspect all the https http packets and it will check each and every traffic each and every packet with its policy uh, security policy we have configured it okay if in case uh, it identified that there is a um, security breach okay if, if it identifies that it uh, it is not uh, as per the security compliances it will trigger a violation okay it it triggers violation okay if it if it sees a security breach in the request in the in the packet it triggers violation and based on uh, the method we configure us like uh, either we can uh, you know we can configure waf in such a way if it triggers a violation we can drop the packet we can drop the packet here itself or we can we can log the request and we can allow, make them to pass through it for some extent okay basically it will triggers violation and proceed further accordingly maybe if, if we want to block it we can uh, configure in such a way we can create a security security policy in such a way to drop that request or we can make it to pass through it but still it will be logged here okay so it will e intercept each packet it will inspect it it will check whether uh, it's as per the security policy okay if there is any violation it's if there is any breaches it will triggers a violation and it will drop the request okay and uh, it, it's up to all it's it's not only for layer 3 or layer 4 as like this firewall yeah, even uh, it mitigates all avaps top 10 okay avaps top 10 is the uh, major web critical risk right so waf waf has the capability it has the ability even to mitigate uh, this kind of a top top 10 vulnerabilities okay so it, it will in, it will intercept inspect each and every http https packet okay it will check with the security policies whatever you have configured in this uh, appliance and if violates if if it's breaching the security policy it will trigger a violation and proceed further accordingly if we are if you want to block it it will drop and block and if we simply want to log and pass through it we can make it but uh, generally we'll use to block it in some cases when we are defending security policies for the first time or when, when we are uh, newly building the security policy we will be allowing those for some extent to learn about the traffics so once we are well enough to do it then going forward we'll drop it okay so this is how it works uh, so here in the traditional firewall as it works on layer 3 and layer 4 it checks for only network security it provides network security however waf it works on top layer it provides application security okay and if the request uh, if the request is legitimate when it's checking if the request is legitimate it, it it's as per the uh, security compliance as per the security policy then it will allow the request to pass to the server okay as like the same even in the return packet also we can configure the waf in such a way that it can uh, inspect this return packet also it will intercept it it will inspect it if there is any uh, you know uh, again if there is any breach against the security policy configured uh, we can it can be dropped or it can be pass through it okay uh, so generally uh, if there is some sen uh, sensitive information leak kind of a steps uh, from uh, it means if, in the return packet if waf detects any sensitive information that's leaking in the response packet then immediately it will trigger violation okay so means it will check the forwarding packet also and when the response packet from the servers also will be checked by the waf and it will be allowed to pass through the user so in this way it is uh, mitigating the attacks from this malicious user and it's preventing hackers uh, to compromise the server and it is keeping the web server safe and secure 
so this is what uh, this is very high level understanding of waf uh, going forward in our upcoming videos let's understand about waf in detail uh, in our labs right